You're listening to the radio program, Christ Alone, with Darren Dolacek, one of the elders at Missio Church in Mount Air, Iowa. Today's scripture is Luke chapter 2, verse 11. For unto you is born this day, in this city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Friends, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Last week, in our Names of Jesus series, we looked at the name Jesus and the meaning behind it that he will save his people from their sins. This week, we are looking at the actual title of Savior. It isn't just that Jesus is a Savior or one who saves. He is the Savior. It is a title or a position that he holds. Not only does Jesus save, but he is the Savior. You know, many people have had the title of president. Honestly, even I have been president. Probably at one point or another in your life, you've been president too. Of course, it might help to mention that I was president of my 4-H club. However, none of us is likely to introduce ourselves as the president. That's usually a specific title reserved for a unique individual in the United States of America. The same goes for Jesus when we call him Savior. We use this description casually all the time in our conversations. If we're watching a ball game with a come-from-behind victory, the person scoring the final points saves the game. Or if a pitcher comes in and closes out the win under certain circumstances, they are given the save. If a lifeguard were to pull you out of the water when you're unconscious, you might address them as your savior in a very real and meaningful way. But none of the instances would qualify someone as being classified as the savior. Yet this is what Jesus is. This official title is very special. In the Old Testament, the title of savior is is given special place to the God of Israel. Yeah, there are references of God sending to Israel various saviors when they would cry out in their trouble. But we read a statement like this from Isaiah chapter 43, 11, saying, I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. We see that it is God alone who can truly be called the Savior. This has huge implications for what we read in the New Testament. The unity of the Bible demands that we see this. There is no Savior but the one Creator God. And Jesus is that Savior. He is the Savior because He is unique in His ability to bring about the salvation that we need. Jesus and Jesus alone can accomplish the salvation that mankind needs. As John says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 14, We have seen and testify that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Jesus is also the Savior because there is salvation nowhere else. We cannot be saved through our efforts, no matter how great. We cannot be saved through our own righteousness. It is insufficient. If we are to be saved, it is to be done through Jesus, the Savior, alone. As Peter says in his sermon in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The only question left is this, not is Jesus a Savior, or is He the Savior even, but is He your Savior? Turn from your sin and your self-reliance and turn your eyes toward Him. He is sufficient to save you today. Thanks for listening to Christ Alone. If you would like more information on the gospel or would like to hear previous episodes, go to christalone.podbean.com. And until next time, may the peace of God given by faith in the vicarious life and death of Christ be yours. Amen.